Shalom Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. I'm so used to saying Israeli news live, I did not even know how to start the video. Anyway, I, I wanted to share something with you guys that just came to my heart the other day. I've taught this before, been several years ago, but um, sharing some things with my wife, and, and God really, He's so kind to me. He deals with me in ways that is just would blow your mind away. Some of the revelations of things that I get from him are amazing and many times i don't even bring them out they're they're so in depth uh, this one is very simple though but yet it's beautiful and i wanted to share this with you um, remember in first corinthians chapter 15 verses 45 through 47 it says and so it was written the first man adam was made a living soul the last man excuse me last adam was made a quickening spirit Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now, what is a quickening spirit? He made him a quickening spirit. He gave him life. But you know what's so beautiful in the two types that you have here. Adam, the first man, Yeshua being the second Adam. And what was that? In both those Adams, their bride was inside of them. Adam, though he was made of the earth, an earthly man, that was just the human body that was made that earthly man. He was clay, made from the clay of the earth, but he didn't have any life in him until God breathed into him the breath of life. As, as it says in Hebrew, which means that God breathed his own life inside of that body. But notice the word chayim. Chayim shows that it was in the plural form. I forget exactly, Genesis 3, or uh, I believe is the word that Maybe Genesis chapter 2. I apologize for that. I'm just doing it off memory there. But anyway, when he says, God breathes into that body, into his nose, that life, which chayim comes from the word chay, which is life, plural, but the yod in there tells us it's from the eternal one, the eternal father, God of all. All right? And it's plural because why? Well, God was breathing more than one soul into that body. That was God's own life being breathed into the body. The body was just a man body, right? Then later, what happens? God separates the two. And he puts Adam into a deep sleep. Now notice, Adam had to go into a deep sleep in order for his bride to be brought out, right? Right? And she also is a living soul, but you notice God never has to breathe into her. Why? Because she's already filled with the Spirit of God. Now they're both together, they're walking in the garden, but something happens. Sin comes in. And when sin comes in, remember when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and they both realized they were naked? That reminds me of Laodicea. They're blind. They say they're rich and have need of nothing. Why? Because they got money. And they got their little money. I got these little coins here. Ain't nothing here. A little five, uh, uh, five crowns in check money. It's like 25 cents in American money. They got their gold. They got, they, they're stocking up on gold and everything. We're rich. We have need of nothing. That's kind of the way the, the, the Israelites were when they came out of Egypt. Yeah, they borrowed all the gold from the neighbors. They were rich, all right, had need of nothing now. But when Moses comes down off the mountain, he said they were all naked and didn't know it. Just like Laodicea, naked and you don't know it. It's not what God meant for you to use that gold for. That's why he says, I counsel for you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That's a deep one. Imagine, uh, uh, mm, that's very deep. You have no idea what that means, I'm sure. He said, to give you eyes sad that you can see. But anyway, that's kind of like what happens here. Sin comes in. They eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then they knew they were naked. Do you know why? They lost the light. 
to glow. They didn't know they were naked the entire time. Because why? They were clothed in His glory, in the light of God Himself, the Spirit of God. But when they sinned, they lost that light. All right? Now, but what happens when it speaks here, right here in Corinthians here? See, the second, the last Adam, we call it the second, it actually says the last, last Adam, was made a what? A quickening spirit. Now, I just jumped over here to Esau. And, and by the way, if you ever want an online Bible, it's really a nice one there. And um, they don't charge anything, but they, you know, they do ask if you'd like to contribute like uh, a little bit of money for doing it. I think it's worth it. I've done it and I really appreciate it. But when you go right down here to this verse 45, a quickening spirit right there. There's that word. And I can't pronounce it because I don't do Greek. But anyway, what is it? It is to make a lie or to give life. He became a, a, a life-giving spirit. And how was he able to give life? The same way when God, when Adam went into that deep sleep. And do you know, by the way, the word used there in Hebrew for that deep sleep is the same word that we use for being put into a coma today. It was such a deep sleep, it was like he was comatose, as if he were dead. And from his side, and you know, you can say rib if you want, but it's from his side, something in there, I believe it's from the DNA of Adam. God takes from that and he forms a woman. Right? And the same thing with Yeshua. When he was on the cross, that Roman soldier drove that spear into his side, but notice he's already dead. But when he drove that spear into his side, that's when he became a quickening spirit. It wasn't, it wasn't the fact that, I mean, he already had the life in there. What life? It was the life that was to bring us to life. Why? Because we are darkened within our own beings without the spirit of Almighty God, like it was with Adam and Eve when God breathed into his nostrils. He was a living being with the life of Almighty God. But sin separated us from God, and it took what? It wasn't, you know, so many people say, you know, I want to be washed in the blood and things like that. It was the life that was in his blood is what was what mattered. That's why you see that when he was pierced in his side and the water and the blood came out and it separated, that was a sign to the Jews so that they would know that the very Messiah that they had, that, that, that the Romans had pierced, that he was the rock itself. That the elders of Israel were to go out and judge and smite according to what Moses was told to do. And that was a sign. Just like the little woman at the well. He said, if you knew it was, it's talking to you. I'd give you water. You don't come here to drink no more. Do you think he was just saying that metaphorically? I don't think so. There's some things on that that can take you a lot deeper as well. But he gave her a sign what to look for. And when his side was pierced and his water came out separated from his blood, it was showing that the life that was in the blood. Remember how the Bible often refers to water? The waters of life. And that's what can come back upon us. His spirit, a quickening spirit, a life-giving spirit. And that was his bride. That was Eve. Remember, Eve, Chava, is like the mother of all living. So the mother of living, in other words, the feminist spirit that is in him, because as the bride, we're the feminist portion of Yeshua, that comes out of him so that it can come back upon us so that we can be one with him. As Yeshua said, the kingdom of God is within you. I'm Stephen Badoon, you're watching the Institute of Biblical Research. Shalom and blessings to you.